Packers win on Thanksgiving, and Tausch and I couldn't wait all the way to Monday to talk about it. So we've got to talk about it right now, edition of Wilde and Tausch. I'm Jason Wilde in Green Bay. Jesse's in his house enjoying a Black Friday before he goes shopping or whatever he involves. Is that aqua? What co- what color are those a, walls? Yeah, this is this is green. This is the home office. So this is fun for me because you guys always get to do this from undisclosed locations. Yeah. Here I am finally. And you have, a, yeah, you cool. have like a map of the different continents on some type of looks like yeah. dolphin blue wall. No, it's, it's green. That it's is very not green. green. It's like Packers that's, green. That's Dan Marino oh, you're green. Wearing that ain't a Packers green shirt. That it's ain't yeah, Packers. That, doesn't it that is not off. Packers green. That's aqua green. Aqua blue. Uh, and our fashion expert from an undisclosed location of his own uh, is the Packers Hall of Famer, Mark Tauscher. All right. Wh- I, what exactly are we doing here? It's uh, Black Friday. We don't have a show yep. on the traditional platforms, yeah. but we're still here. Yeah, I got to admit, uh, it's Black Friday. People are in their cars. I never like taking off on Friday. This You guys always force me to do it because we got to put poor, poor little Jesse. He needs to be out shopping for deals, and he doesn't want to produce a show. Putting up the Christmas so, lights this afternoon. First time so, we're putting up Christmas lights at home, yeah. So And with the push to go digital, I thought, let's do us a little digi show. We don't have to go three hours, but with how things have played out, and the fact that we got a Badger game coming up, and I think maybe the greatest win in the Matt LaFleur era. I've said that a couple of different times. Regular season. Regular season. Tell Jason, tell me a better win than what we saw. Tell me about a better win than we saw today. Did you say that like six days ago? I said the Bears game. The, and the Bears game, that one too, yeah. Yeah, but Jason, you know this, covering the team for 28 years. You win big games to set yourself up for bigger games. Tell me, tell me, Matt LaFleur didn't enjoy this Thanksgiving the most he's ever enjoyed at Thanksgiving because his back was against the wall. He didn't have half his team. All these guys are injured. Nobody gave him a chance. We sang about, we didn't think they could win. And they didn't even go up in, it wasn't some fluky win. They were a better team, a more physical team. And Matt LaFleur tonight or tomorrow, whatever it is, I don't even know what day we're doing this. He is sipping on his drink of choice and enjoying the heck out of that Thanksgiving win because he, you know, he now believes that this team can get it done. You know, he thinks that. All right. Uh, Wait, let me do my pendulum again. Whoa. 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 Uh, I don't have skis down here in the in the wildy. Oh, I'm in back over studio. my skis. I'm 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 ski jumping. I'm jumping. You better bring skis in on Monday when we're doing the show Eddie, back on the radio. Remember, yeah. Eddie the Eagle Tauscher right here has been uh, all over his skis multiple times. But look, if there is a game to overreact to in a positive manner, this was it. Matt Lafleur goes in and says, "All gas, no break." We want the ball and we're going to score, right? Because they win the coin flip and they take the ball. Of course, if they'd have lost the coin flip and the Lions defer, they still have the chance. So he goes into the game thinking, we're going to be aggressive. Loved it. Oddly enough, he actually texts Jordan Love the morning of the game and says, you know what, I'm having second thoughts about running that first play we have dialed up. And Jordan's like, no, 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 let's do it and a 53-yard completion to Christian Watson later, and they're in business. They scored three first-quarter touchdowns. The first 10 games of the season, they had two first-quarter touchdowns. So, Tausch, you've played in, you know, 180 games or whatever. How much different is a game when you get off to a fast start? It obviously was huge for them on Thanksgiving. Yeah, I, I I really think I love the fact that LaFleur, I think LaFleur, for as poorly as I thought he handled the first half of this season, uh, today you set a tone with how you message and how you talk to your team. And Matt LaFleur, I almost can guarantee you, went in there, he challenged his lines of scrimmage, D-line, O-line, and said, listen, Detroit came in, they bully balled us, they told us they were going to bully ball us, and they did. Um, way back in September. And I guarantee you, he challenged every, everybody up on those lines. And he also challenged the offense to say, you know what? 
we don't want to let their let Detroit sit back and run the football and play action pass. We need to get out ahead of these guys and make them uncomfortable. And not only can you say all those things, but then you show it by your actions. And when you said, you know, when you saw him say, it didn't matter if they deferred or what, we're taking the ball and we're putting the pedal down, throwing it deep to Watson. And you set the tone for that game. And the Detroit Lions, they're a good football team, but they need to run the football. They need to play action pass. You get them behind a little bit, and you you get them in the vibe that they got to get in a shootout and get away from it. They still ran the ball well today, but did they go go with the game plan they wanted, or did the Packers dictate to them? And obviously, the Packers dictated to them. They played their game, they executed their plan, and that's why they walked out of Ford Field on Thanksgiving Day with a big, most important win in the Matt Lafleur non Aaron Rodgers era. Period. So, b- b- before I get Jesse's thoughts from the room that he claims is the same color as his shirt, uh, is it possible that maybe you were a little hard on Matt LaFleur? I don't want to sound like the narrator in uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer talking about Hermie and the other outcasts, but is it possible that it just has taken Matt LaFleur with this young of a team and a bunch of guys he doesn't know very well? Because he and I talked about this uh I lose track of the days now. It must have been Tuesday that he, he he didn't know what he was working with. And I think he wasn't sure how to approach it, both schematically and messaging wise. And is it possible that he's now finally gotten a feel for Jordan, for everyone around him and how to address these young guys so they know what's at stake and they know there's no excuses to being young? Because that was, the I think, the first domino for him was coming out and flat out saying, we're done with that game. We're not playing it anymore. Yeah, no, I told you that. You're, you're taking my words and using that, and I and you can use it. Just make sure you cite me on that quote because Usually I'm, I'm telling you what words you're thinking. No, about. I know, <laughs> but I said that, and yeah, I was hard on Matt Lafleur because I don't think he did a very good job of adjusting. He is the leader of that team. I told you guys last year when Aaron Rodgers was traded in March that this was going to be the toughest and most important job, and the most pressure was on Matt Lafleur because. He has been the winningest coach. He needed to set the tone. And I don't think he set the tone very well. I thought he was a little wishy-washy on, you know, the Jordan Love part and the young team. And he understood what he had. He knew it was going to be a challenge, but take it on. And I thought there was a little bit too much of the, whoa, woe is me. We don't have this. We don't have that early in the season. And I firmly believe, even with that Pittsburgh game that they lost, that was before, I think he had basically said after the game, who did they play before Pittsburgh? They beat the Rams. They beat the Rams, but it was kind of a, you know, not a real clean game. And I think that's when he came out and said, and maybe it was before the Rams. It was about a month ago is when he came out and said, I'm done with the excuses. I'm done with this young player mistake. Like we have to grow up. Nobody cares. And once you set that tone and you let your young players know, hey, I believe in you. You got to be better. I got to be better. Just like I crushed him last year with that London trip and how that messaging was set. It was garbage. And he knows it. I think now you give him a ton of credit. And Lord knows I've given him a ton of credit the last month for what he's done because that tone was set. I thought that was a critical moment and a juncture point for this team. And it's the team is gaining confidence as it's going. So was I hard on him at the beginning of the year? He is the leader of the team. He needed to set a better tone. He needed to come up with a game plan. And, yes, it was going to be tough. You were going to lose games, but you had to at least feel like you were moving in the right direction. And until he made those comments, I didn't feel like the team was moving. I felt like it was kind of a rudderless ship where, oh, there's young guys. All guys are injured. Oh, these guys can't play. What can we possibly do? Well, when you say enough and then you go out and start doing it and these young guys start growing into their position – and into their role, which is what we've seen, and it's a pretty fun team to watch. And I think Matt LaFleur has done a really good job of pulling the team out of it. I just wished it didn't take as long, but it is tough. And I think Matt has realized that, and now we're in a position, obviously, where I think every Packer fan that called into Green Bay game night that's going to call into Wilde and Tausch next week, they're apologizing to Jordan, to Goody, to Matt LaFleur, because this team – 
I think it's trending in a big time direction that everybody's excited about. Yeah, and they're and they're going to the playoffs. We'll get to that in a second. Jesse, uh, in between Musty Mac and your trip to fan nap uh, on Thanksgiving, what jumped out at you most about this game? Um, just the the energy and it seemed how prepared they came out in the first quarter. Um, that was a first half performance that we hadn't seen at all outside of Chicago this year, it felt like. And Jordan, uh, granted the one touchdown throw, I don't think he meant to thread the needle as well as he did. I think that was that <laughs> second touchdown. That was insane. Uh, but there were some dimes that Jordan Love was throwing at Ford Field uh, on Thanksgiving Day. I was really impressed with how he looked. I know statistically it was not his best game of the year. I think he threw for more yards and uh, he's had you know similar touchdown performances. But I thought against the Lions on Thanksgiving Day was Jordan Love's best game of his career so far. Well, he now, over the last four games, has completed 65.2% of his passes, eight touchdowns against two interceptions, a quarterback rating of over 103. So he, in the last four weeks, both statistically and with the eye test, has looked really good. On the other side of the ball, Tausch, you talked about, I want to get back, I'll get back to the offensive line in a second, but on the other side of the ball, Rashawn Gary with three sacks. He had been quiet in recent weeks. He goes back to where he tore his ACL, has a huge game. Two of the three sacks result in fumbles. Uh, Jared Goff loses three fumbles today. Uh, the Packers cash in. The, the Lions also go 0 for 4 on their first four fourth down attempts. Three against the defense, one against special teams. I, I'm not downgrading the Packers' win because oh, of God. that, because they're the ones who have to get the stop. <sighs> You're not doing this again, are you? And, and Joe Barry would tell us uh, that they're takeaways. They're not giveaways. You got to take them away. Uh, but what did you think of a team that struggled to beat the Bears last week and did not play very well on Thanksgiving with home field advantage against a team that was an eight and a half point underdog against them? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't feel like we need to go down this road because the Lions are a good team. They are a flawed team, like most teams in this league are, and you're starting to see people kind of expose a little bit of that. Um, right. I, I thought the the way this game played, the defensive line needed to beat up on a really good O-line. And, yeah, there's uh, I think their right guard was injured, and Kenny Clark had some really good plays against him. Rashawn Gary had a great afternoon. Preston Smith made a big play. Um that's where the game is won and lost. And Detroit, their formula is run the football, and Jared Goff needs play action. He is not somebody that's going to sit in the pocket and crush people and throw for 400 yards. That's just not who he is. So getting out to the lead was was huge. But then also being able to play your game and really let your guys be more physical and do it, that the getting off the field on fourth down, the you know, Campbell said a couple weeks ago, hey fans. Wear diapers because this is what we do. That's what Detroit does. And they accomplish, they achieve it a bunch. They convert, they do it. So to sit and try and diminish, and I know that's not what you, I know, but you said it. And you're a wordsmith. People tried to do that last week with the Chargers. Well, they dropped this and they did this. They're, you don't apologize for anything in this league. And today, it wasn't Detroit doing that. Green Bay forced the issue. Detroit didn't execute. You know how teams don't execute? Because they're uncomfortable. And teams put pressure on them to not execute. So Joe Barry deserves flowers. He deserves extra turkey gravy sandwiches today. Doesn't matter. He deserves to be praised because we've crushed him too. I've been at least on the side, you know, with Joe. I think he's put his team in position to win more often than not with the ball in the quarterback's hands at the end of these games. So there have been some ups and downs, the 200 yards rushing and everything else, but you don't see big plays and you see if you can just make cover guys enough. And with all the guys that are out, uh, you, there is no apologies necessary today. They were the better team. They were the more physical team and they were the team that walked out of there with a big win because of those things. I saw Bulaga tweeted you. I, I suppose he could have texted you just as easily, but be that as it may. Uh, he wants to talk on Wednesday about number 5-0, Zach Tom. But if, if we're being honest, 
as good as Zach Tom was against Aiden Hutchinson, their whole line was really good today. Really uh, good. No sacks for Jordan Love, only three hits. The last time they had played each other, Jordan Love was sacked a season high five times and hit 12 times. That's a big swing by the offensive line that was, I would argue, embarrassed by their front the last time they played. They did get embarrassed. And uh, again, I am certain that film was rolling and guys looked at it and said, well, we're not doing this again. And it's much harder to do that on the road. Uh, You don't even have, I think Aaron Jones played a limited amount in that first game. You didn't have that. And you just decided to go out. And I think, I really think the, you know, a couple of different things have kind of helped get this season back on track. I, I really think Elton Jenkins being healthy has been critical to being an anchor and kind of stabilizing where this line is. And then Zach Tom also, he was not healthy in that first Detroit game. He was, he gutted it out. He gave you everything he had, but he's healthy. And he is continuing to just rack up big wins. Watt, no problem. Hutchinson, no problem. Uh, Bose, I know, got hurt. But you just keep putting these guys out in front of him, and he keeps blocking them. And the run game that, The group, Luke Buckus and Steno and the whole group deserves a ton of credit because the reason this team struggled as much as it did early, people put it on Jordan Love. It was Jordan Love was under constant pressure. Now he's not. And you're seeing his development because those guys have gotten that much better up front. So uh, after the game, I told you that I was looking for Homer, who was on his flight back from Hawaii, because I had said the previous Green Bay game night that if they steal one of the next two against either Detroit or Kansas City that this team had a chance to make the playoffs after everything we thought that they were buried and they had the four game losing streak but I really believe they had to steal one of these well guess what they stole one of these they didn't and steal hey hey they didn't steal anything when you're an eight and a half point underdog and I'm Jason, saying it four days I before get- the game is played They stole it. The way they played today, they dominated it. Let me tell you this, though. Uh, uh, If you want to look at it from a Vegas standpoint, yes, they walked in. They Remember when Dan Campbell said, we'll knock on your front door and we'll tell you we're here? Well, you know what? We walked in, we, the Green Bay Packers walked into the front door of Ford Field on Thanksgiving. They went in, and not only did they go in the house, they took all the food and said, uh, deuces be, we're going to go eat back in Green Bay, and we're going to take all your food, cranberries, pumpkin pie, pecan pie, everything, and we're going to leave you just sitting there by yourself. And that's what they did. They're not stolen about it. They just went in and took it. What is coming in and taking it out of your house, be stealing it? <laughs> you let them in. No, it didn't. it's not like they had armed. It, was, it wasn't stealing, like an armed robbery. It, it wasn't armed. Are they you were sure? let in and they, they took it. Armed yeah. with Jordan Love's golden arm. That's what there you go. All, All right, right. Wildy. So here's the deal. I said on Green Bay game night last night that this team was going to make the playoffs. How on earth? So what? What are you shaking your head about? Tell me a quarterback that's playing better through the last month than Jordan. Tell me one. Do you have one? Uh, Trevor Lawrence. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, he's played really well. I just saw. Yeah. All right. My point on this is, here we go. Uh, what I'm and, and I have been a roller coaster. I agree with you. Two weeks, I thought, this is awesome. And you know what? It was a prelude to what we're seeing now. There were struggles. It was worse than I thought. And what bothered me was the fact we were getting worse. We weren't getting better. Now, we're getting much better at a quicker rate. And the young guys are stepping up, which is what we all hoped they would. And Jordan Love is playing big-time quarterback. So you look at the schedule. This is no longer when I scolded you about not understanding the fact that the Packers are looked at the same way. and You got mad at me. Hard, hard to keep track of how often I'm. Well, no, I, didn't, I don't scold you often. But when I did, it was because I don't think we you know, I don't want to rehash that. But no, now no, people, people are looking at the Green Bay Packers kind of like they always look at the Green Bay Packers. Oh. OK, so. They have the Chiefs a week from Sunday on December 3rd. Then we've talked multiple times on the show about the final five games, which, again, where that argument stemmed from is that basically both the Packers and their five opponents all in this varying degrees of not great, still figuring themselves out to bad teams. So 
whether it's Carolina or the Giants or the Bears or the now suddenly refading Vikings, there's some winnable games down the stretch of the last five games. Who knows what's going to happen against the Chiefs on Sunday Night Football because they haven't looked that great lately either. By the worst, way. O- hey, Jason, worst offense in the second half in the entire NFL. The Chiefs. So, to, so the Packers were able to snap their worst offense in the entire NFL in the first half with a good performance mm-hmm. on Thursday. Now we'll see if the Chiefs are able to do that with their issues. But the if you believe they're going to make the playoffs now, yeah, and as of this time right now because the vikings haven't played yet because i know people are going to watch this on youtube later on and whatever else as of right now the packers are one game back to the vikings Mm -hmm. vikings are six and five packers are five and six the vikings do have a head-to-head tiebreaker at this point but they play each other on new year's so you are now you proclaimed they were going to the playoffs after the bears game and they did and then you lost faith and the pendulum swung. They lost four mm-hmm. in a row. They're not getting better. They're getting worse. They're regressing. So now true. the pendulum has swung back. They won three out of four. Yep. What is What prevents them from having – what do they have to do to make sure the pendulum doesn't swing back and we're back to, well, they're not making the playoffs. They're regressing again. Well, I mean, obviously just continuing to play the way they are and getting better, but um, – I believe that that Viking game on New Year's is going to be a playoff game. I think just like that Detroit Lion game last year was a playoff game, that's where this is going to look. Because getting a nine wins is going to get you in the playoffs. Green Bay gets to nine wins, they're going to be in the playoffs. That gives them two losses. Okay, nine and eight gets them in. As long as it's if, if they can beat the Minnesota Vikings. I would not be shocked if the Green Bay Packers beat the Chiefs, and I won't be shocked if the Chiefs beat them. I think the Chiefs got the nut whack which is tough to beat. Never underestimate the heart of a champion, yeah. just for the people that don't listen every day. So that game will be tough. Outside of that, Minnesota will probably be favored, but they're going to be on there. You know, Dobbs is going to be their quarterback unless he gets hurt. And I think everybody thinks that Green Bay can win that game. So, y- yes, it's they've dug a big hole, but everything is lined up for them to find a way to get this done. And we all thought coming into the Charger game after that Pittsburgh loss, got to win one, got to probably win two. And it's going to be really tough to do. And it turns out, yeah, every game that you win is tough. But when you look at how Green Bay did it, they didn't do anything super special. They just are getting better and playing good football. That's what leads me to think that they can pull this off. Do you guys believe? that they have turned a corner to the degree and it's a week to week league and all the other stuff that they will not have a clunker in the final six weeks. No, I think they still have a clunker, Yeah, but I think so too, but that doesn't mean you can't win. They played the Rams game was a clunker. They didn't play great against the Rams. The Rams stink too. Carolina, you're going to have to be double clunked to lose to the Carolina Panthers and the giants. You're going to have to go clunk on clunk to lose to either of those two teams. Yeah. So you can win while still being clunk. Um, but And you have the, – your margin of error is very small because of the position you put yourself in. Now, the Chiefs game – the Chiefs game, I guarantee if they win that game, everybody and their brother is going to say playoffs. Done. Yeah, right. No doubt. That's totally. how I think interesting next week's game is going to be. So – all of this stuff, I just think the excitement level and the fandomness of this, Jason, do you think right now at five and six, you predicted this team to win six games? This team is definitely going to win more than six games. I mm-hmm. think you even would agree with that. Is this I team, do. and Jesse, I don't know how we do it on Digi only, poll it. Is this a playoff team? Oh, poll it. Okay. Well, no, well, see, well, I know I, I watch these. Monday, Jesse, I watch these digital shows, and they put like little polls right on the thing, which says "poll," like right on the yeah. Little oh, they write "poll." Yeah, yeah. and then That's they put idea. it up, and then you see like the little the the bar graph goes up and down as the votes come in. It, it's like this interactive, is, like boom. This boom. is a very low budget digi op operation. Oh, this is here well, it's right early now. in the yeah. digi game. But Jason, do you think they make the playoffs as we sit here right now? Uh, I.
Yes, I think they probably do. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, wow. now, now, I do want to say this. When, when I said that they would go 6-11, and 11, it was after they went to 2-1 and one after that comeback against the Saints that I acknowledged that they're winning more than 6. If they have to win 9, I think that there's multiple, like, bad break. They don't play that badly. It's not a clunker, but they don't quite play well enough, like, mm-hmm. on the road. Like, look, the Giants stink, but the Giants can find a way on a Monday night. Yeah, they just beat Washington last week. So, yeah. Yeah, and so, it, listen, so, this team is still – you're right. This team's still going to have clunk in it, for sure. It's still too young. The there's going to be some clunk. But I just think there's so much other clunk in these other teams that they're going to outclunk our clunk. Yeah, the Tampa but, game scares me at Lambeau on December 17th. Short week coming off the Giants game. They might have some momentum going in there. They might start to – kind of buy into the hype a little bit. Like, yeah, we're better than all these teams. That's got Arizona Cardinals, Eddie Lacy, Mike McCarthy vibes to me, the Tampa coming to town uh, December 17th. Uh, my biggest thing that I'm concerned about is that Luke Musgrave is not going to be available for a while. And mm. while they were able to do it today. Yeah. Uh, Steinhoffler today, had a big game. Steiny had a big game. We'll, we'll uh, review I, the tape on Monday on that uh, one. Steiny. Uh, yeah, I, I, he, he had two catches for 15 yards. He had the Tutter. touchdown. Locked Tutter. Down. Tutter. Uh, yeah, he had the touchdown while you were yelling Tutter in my ear. But more importantly, can Christian Watson sustain what he did on Thanksgiving? That is one mm-hmm. of the really important questions because yeah. uh, they trusted him with that first play. He delivered. He ended up with, I think, five catches for 94 yards. Is that a springboard for him, or is that an anomaly for him? If it turns out to be a springboard for him, then I like their chances a whole heck of a lot more offensively. So, Jesse, right, Eddie, they're making the playoffs. No, I think they're going to look back and, and you're just being a contrarian. No, I the I think they have one too many losses. I think they're going to look at the back to back Raiders Broncos mm. snafus and really regret those two games because they were very winnable yeah. early in the season. You might be right. Okay. All right. Uh, so, uh, the king of all digital media, uh, you got anything else you'd like to add before we? Yeah, last before? thing I want to do is I, I want Jesse. Farm. Since, um, well, it's Black Friday. Uh, since we are not going to play Woe Nelly because it's not on the radio, yeah. I kind of want Jesse to come up with three quick hitters of Woe Dolly because Dolly Parton brought the house down at Texas Stadium yesterday. Wait, so. Brought the house right, Jesse, down. Jesse, let me, let me buy you some time. Uh, in order to I did not watch like more than Dolly. two seconds of the Cowboys game just for context. I have no idea what Dolly did. Uh, she she apparently looked 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 very good and sounded really good. I didn't see the house down. But while you come up with your three quick hitters from the Packers win uh, in Detroit, what are, <laughs> did did you did Tausch watch Jack Harlow at halftime? I didn't understand any of it. Like I didn't get oh, any I, of it. I know one of his songs. I know he he sells. Why were they in an igloo? Why were they in an igloo? I don't know. But what, here's my issue: if I'm going to have a halftime show, and and again, that is not my chosen music. Obviously, Taylor Swift, as Matt Lafleur well knows, would have been preferred. But it was kind of low energy, and that was what I didn't understand. Like halftime. It, it, it didn't really help get your crowd fired up. It wasn't like soaring guitar solos and everybody got all excited and they all went to the concession stand. I didn't think yeah, it did much for them. I didn't get it. It looked like they were uh, like getting ready to start a campfire up by an igloo. Like that's what it looked yeah. like to me. I don't know any of the music and it obviously fell flat. Uh, Dolly, Dolly now. Tony Romo couldn't stop talking Dolly. Like she, he just couldn't. It was more, it was more, unbelievable to listen to. Like it was great. More memorable than Creed and Scott Stapp that day in Dallas on Thanksgiving. All right, Jesse, did I buy you enough time? For yeah, your three? oh, we're good. We're ready to go. <laughs> Knew this was happening. All right, guys, are you more closer to <laughs> nine or to five in your confidence in Jordan Love as the franchise quarterback of the Packers? 
That's a Dolly oh, Parton. Well done. That's good. Nine. Uh, I'm, I bought in. I, I, you just you liked a lot about him. Uh, you liked the beginning of the season. I did not like where he was in the middle of the season. But even through those lenses, you saw some good things about how he how he handled the negativity and the lack of production in the first half of these games and how he bounced back and was able to play and how his teammates were talking about him and some of the big plays that he would make. Uh, there was enough there to not say, well, he stinks. It's like, we need to see it. We need to see more. And once you started seeing these receivers get more comfortable and the old line started playing like we thought it was going to with David Bakhtiari and with a healthy El- Elton Jenkins, all of a sudden, you started to see more and more big-time plays from Jordan Love. So my confidence, especially with a 9-5, to five, I'm going with the 9. What a way to make a living. Uh, I'm a 9 as well. All right, Jesse. Uh, Dolly. Whoa, Dolly. Part 2. Are you, Joe, leaning more positively on A.J. <laughs> Dillon after his performance as running back one against the Lions? Uh. I can't wait for the uh, Ivory Streams or whatever that last song is. That I'll you're gonna, the stream. That, that you're is gonna. what we are. So, actually, somebody had a great idea. Jerry Jones should have went out and done this duet with Dolly <laughs> at Jerry World, doing <laughs> the Rogers duet with portion. in that. Um, I'm not still, you know, I like A.J. Dillon. I thought that screen pass was awesome, you know, where he ricocheted off of the uh, – the linebacker for, I can't remember his name, no, Asaloni. And he, it looked like he was like a gnat, like, yeah, get out of here. But when you're looking at running the football and especially short yardage, it's just not there. Like, I'm not seeing it. A.J. Dillon, I think, has stepped up and he's done what you, he's done some good things, especially in the pass game. But I, from a running back standpoint, I'm going to go Jolie Knott uh, on that regard as far as if I want him as my lead back. Moving forward, I want Aaron Jones back. So I can't Jolene to A.J. Dillon when I want Aaron Jones back tomorrow. Uh, I want Patrick Taylor to get more opportunities. I'm thrilled that he's back. I love his story. He's a great dude. Uh, but the best play that Aaron jo- uh, that A.J. Dillon was involved in was not going the wrong way on the fourth and one handoff. Uh, it was how effectively he sold the option and even got knocked on his keister at the end of it when Jordan Love took off and ran for 37 yards. Prize pick. And uh, Prize pick. I'm just going to say I won your prize pick for you. So Good day, uh, prize I do lean toward that great run by Jordan Love instead. Dolly, would you rather see Joe Barry return next year or not after uh, the performance? A lot of screen time for uh, Coach Barry on. Yeah, Fox. what is going on with why? Why a lot is of screen become, time? Why has he become like the Truman Show? They're putting that well, let small me, camera. Let, let, and let, firing let me explain it at to you guys. Let me explain to you guys. So when they put a camera up in the press box right in your seat, then they want to use it as much as they can. So they show you on television more. You know, I used to be down on the sideline, and they didn't show me very often. But now that I'm up sitting with a desk, they just put the camera right in front of me, and then they keep going to it. My wife loves it. But it's really great that they're just able to show me. And what, how they do that is they have a camera right there. That's how that works. Yeah, Dolly, would you rather see Joe Barry come back next year or not? Yeah. Yeah, I have no problem with Joe Barry. I, I think everybody has always overreacted on the Joe Barry part of it. So, no, I don't have any. So is that Dolly Wood? Dolly Wood, I'd rather. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. The yeah. defense, with a lot of its capital being out, with Jair not playing a bunch and Devondre Campbell not playing a bunch, and we're, you know, you're seeing a lot of young players. And I thought what he was able to do against the Detroit Lions, mixing things up and confusing Goff, uh, he is going to give up some yards running the football. That's what they do. But as I've stated numerous times, what do you not see a bunch of long tutters? You just don't see long tutter throws. You don't. He is. He's basically said this league. I'm going to give some stuff up, but I'm not going to let you beat us with big plays. If you can go down and efficiently run the football and effectively do it without penalties and converting on third and fourth down. Okay. 
And you know what? For the most part, I can't think of any games that it was, you know, Detroit early, but we also turned the football over a little bit. Where have you looked at it and said, what the hell are you doing? Pittsburgh ran it down our throats, which is the probably one of the most disappointing games for JB. But I think he's handled this season pretty doggone good with maybe not the strongest hand that defensive coordinators have had with all the injuries that they've dealt with. They've found a way to keep their team in a lot of games where Jordan Love has had the ball in his hands to go down and win at the end. And Joe Barry deserves some credit. Uh, he's going to get maligned. That's just how it is. But I think he deserves a lot more credit than what he's getting. All right, you see, Dollywood is a theme park named after Dolly Parton. It kind of sounds like Hollywood, but it's Dollywood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, look, I, I, I agree. I, uh, I Dolly would expect, I'm not going to say what I rather, but I would yeah. expect yeah. him to remain as the defensive coordinator. So, uh, again, six games to go. The Packers stand at five and six. They've won three of their last four. They've got a bunch of close losses. They have been better than I expected them to be at Thanksgiving. And the Lions have not won on Thanksgiving now since 2016 and waxing gibbous and all the other stuff notwithstanding. The Packers took it to them. And that's why they won on Thanksgiving Day in Detroit. All right. Uh, I don't know how many more times we'll be digging at Tausch's behest, but I can tell you this. We will return to the normal platforms that we are on 94.5 94.5 ESPN Milwaukee, 100.5 ESPN Madison, 14.30 ESPN Beaver Dam, the ESPN app, ESPNWisconsin.com, your Alexa smart speaker, and streaming live video, kind of like this, but it looks a little different. Can't wait for the poll questions to be uh, put into the video along with the rising and falling. And Dolly, do we, Jesse, do we get to say this? If Dolly Parton isn't a part of this in some way, shape, or form, I'll be a little disappointed. Uh, we'll have Dolly ready to go on Monday. Can we say for now this island in the streaming universe has come to a close? Indeed. Jesse's had that holstered since about 25 minutes ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. That's it for the digital edition of Wilde and Tausch. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on Monday. Have a great night or day or whatever time it is. Take care. Be good. <laughs>